Now, please, please, let me advise you. As a young man, as a young woman, grow large in your spirit. Grow very large. Give yourself to fasting. Give yourself to prayer now. I don't want to define it. When you leave this place, click on your phone, go to Google and find out what, is, what ecumenism is. If I define it, there's no way. No, I will not define it. Are you there? Don't worry, I'm going somewhere. Just stay with me. So they went out from us, but they were not of us. You see, they were not of us. But we were compelled by the religious correctness of our time to accommodate them in our midst, even though they were not of us. And that accommodation violated the principle of separation. And any time the principle of separation is violated, it will produce corruption and violence. The Nigerian church was the golden church of Africa. The revival that sprang forth from our borders was unequaled in the stories of revival that we hear. You've heard about Azusa? It's just that what happened on our soil was not documented. And that's our, our limitation. It wasn't doc documented. We, we've, 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 I've read about many mighty men that rose in the nations of the world. There is no story that I've read about that comes anywhere near what happened through that man, Apostle Joseph Babalola. Near. No story. But you see, it wasn't documented. So we believe it, it never happened. A man that during praise and worship, as they are singing praise and like we just did, he, he levitates. When you see that Western Nigeria received the gospel, most of us don't know what it means. <laughs> it was when, when I was to marry my wife, they were based in Ileife. So I used to go to Ileife to see the family and stuff like that until we got married. And when we now got married, I, I was working in Lagos, so I was going to visit my in-laws once and again. That was when I discovered what was in that city. Now, these people have advanced in their knowledge of divination to a level, a level of accuracy, the lens of divination has been adjusted to accommodate accuracy. What the Ifa priest prophesies comes to pass. In fact, most of our tribes are settled where they are settled today because of divination. And there was no stronger tribe in Nigeria today in divination than our brothers from the West. But there was a revival that overcame that foundation. And whether you like it or not, there is a prophetic spirit that is hanging over people from Western Nigeria. It's not, it's not natural. It came through the witness of a man. During prison, he doesn't want to raise the dead. He's just worshiping God. And he sees that angels will lift him up. Are you there? So I have a chronicle in my library, a very fat chronicle. Somebody took time to put the details of that man's life together. And... They sent me a copy. I don't know who wrote it. I don't know who sent it, but it's in my life. None of the things you read in God's generals comes close to what God did through that man. Are you talking about people that were raised from the dead? That was, that's lunch, that's, that's lunch box issues. Are you talking about healing, sicknesses? In fact, the man operated in healing to a point 
that he became tired of praying for the sick. And he went and prayed over a little stream that was in his neighborhood. And people were going into the stream for healing. And how many years, 20-something years after he died, a madman still entered that stream and came back healed. The, 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 the will of God, the dimensions of the expectations of God concerning the potential of the church in this nation was, was eclipsed by darkness. And what we have today in its best is a state of compromise. And this state of compromise was occasioned by the violation of several principles that are critical to maintaining the civilizations that come from God. Are you still with me? Now, this is the Antichrist strategy. He said they went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. So you are going to see statements like, from us, of us, with us. Are you following? He said, if they were of the same substance, if, if we were homogeneous, the proof of the fact that we have the same stock would have been that they would have continued with us. But they went out from us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. So if the devil wants to strangle that which God is doing, the first ground of compromise he will sell to us is to violate the principle of separation. Are you still with me? Okay. Now that you are coming gradually, let me also come gradually. Can we do Exodus chapter 12 from verse 33 to 38? You will see one of the major challenges of the church in the wilderness. I hope you know when I say the church in the wilderness, you know what I mean. When Brother Stephen was giving his recap on the move of God that had been captured in the nation of Israel, when he came to Moses, he, no, you are not following. Okay, so please give me Acts, before we go to Exodus, can we do Acts chapter 7 verse 37 and 38? Let me establish. Meanwhile, we are going to do, next year we'll do a teaching, because I'm developing it already, the church in the wilderness. By the time we finish that teaching from start to finish, your eyes, you have new eyes and new lenses. If you visit a place that they call a church and it is not a church, you will know. Yes, that's the reason for that teaching. If you lose your capacity for discernment, you, in the name of church, you will serve devils. Because the principle of separation has been compromised. So what we have is no longer homogeneous, it is heterogeneous. So this is Stephen trying to give us an insight into the person and the ministry of Moses. He said, this is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear. Verse 38. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness and with the angel which spake to him in Mount Sinai. With our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. So Moses was considered as the shepherd of the church in the wilderness. The church in the wilderness journeyed 
from the land of captivity into the land of promise. The church in the wilderness stopped 42 times in the journey. Are you there? So there were 42 stations that the church stopped. And by the time you go to the book of Matthew, you are going to see in the book of Matthew when the generations of, of ancestors leading to Christ was captured in the book of Matthew, you are going to see that it was 42 generations, which is consistent with the 42 stations that Israel stopped when they were transiting from the house of bondage into the house of promise. So if we study the church in the wilderness accurately, you will see a prophetic journey of the church of Jesus in every age. In fact, you can even trace and track where the American church is in that, in that journey. You can trace and track where the Ghanaian church is on that journey. So what I want to do now is to show you that even in the church in, in the wilderness, Satan had already pioneered this principle of removing separation from the advancement so that anything that God gets at the end of the day will be a compromised position. And the glory of God in its entirety and fullness will not be able to rest on that civilization because it doesn't look like the arrangement that is established in the heavens. Meanwhile, the idea of God is that thy will be done on earth the same way it is done in heaven. Exodus chapter 12, verse 33. Then you will see what Satan did. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. For they said, we be all dead men. And the people took their dough before it was living and their needing troughs being bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses and they borrowed of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required and they spoiled the Egyptians. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramses to Sukkot about 600,000 on foot that were men beside children. Verse 38. Can you see that? And a mixed multitude went also up with them and flocks and heads and very much cattle. <laughs> the guys were moving. <laughs> what Satan did was that he smuggled. Oh my God, you are not following me. You are not here? I've not started striking the matters. They are matters. They are obvious matters in the landscape of the church of our day that I want to open your eyes to. But we need to start with scripture so that you will not say it's an invention of my own strategy. An invention of my own thinking. I, I had what I wanted to say before I came and tried to look for scriptures to align with. The Bible is not capable of private interpretation. It's a book of one author and many writers. And that's why the principle of witness must be satisfied in bringing out the position of truth. Are you there? A mixed multitude. Satan now arranged a mixed multitude. This mixed multitude, they have a different God. They have different ways. They have different approaches to life. They have different philosophies. This mixed multitude joined themselves to the people that God was delivering to set up a nation that was a nation under God so that God's authority in his fullest extent would be found and factored among the people and God will be able to manifest the same civilization that is in heaven upon the face of the earth. In order to forestall this, why no one was watching a mixed multitude also say we are delivered? Hmm. 
<laughs> and they followed them. You know, this verse is quiet in the book of Genesis, in the book of Exodus. It's quiet, it's a mixed multitude. And then you just, you think, okay, that's all. Wait. Numbers chapter 11, verse 1 to 4. The devil will always attack the principle of separation. And if he succeeds in doing this, he has compromised our civilization. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord. And the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed them that were in the uttermost part of the camp. And the people cried unto Moses, and Moses prayed unto the Lord, and the fire was quenched. Can you see God fighting against his people? And he called the name of the place Tabera, because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. Verse 4. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell and lost him. So it is the loss of the mixed multitude. They will share it among the congregation. When you hear them agitating, say, hey, who, who, we need? The engineer of that campaign is a little, is a little fraction of the population is the mixed multitude. They have a different God. They have different principles. They were not children of Israel. They did not know the God of Israel. They did not subscribe to the God of Israel. What made the God of Israel to fight against his people and to release fire on his own people was because of the lost of the mixed multitude. So if Satan wants to downgrade the quality of Christianity, what he does is that he gets people from his camp to become pastors. And then he makes sure that these pastors have a loud voice. And guess what? These guys will be pushing for the golden plan. And the golden plan is ecumenism. In ecumenism, let us come together. You are different, I'm different. We have a different God. You have a different God. You worship something else. I, but for, for political correctness, let us just be together. So the golden plan of Satan, of the spirit of the Antichrist, is to push for ecumenism. And in ecumenism, we are heterogeneous. In ecumenism, we are not of the same sort. We don't worship the same God. We don't subscribe to the same principles. We are not operating from the same source. We don't have the same values. But so that we, we, it will look as if we are one. Let us unite. Somebody is an Ezemo. He has an altar. He dance, dances to the spirit naked in the night. Oh, 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 oh. But ecumenism will recommend that it is in our interest to be one. But if we try to subscribe to ecumenism, you will discover that what will drive our civilization will be the loss of the mixed multitude. Under such circumstances, the mixed multitude will become powerful, more powerful than the original lot. And because of that, we'll provide concessions to accommodate uh, the mixed multitude in such a way that there will be no crisis. And in that compromise, what we have done is that we have violated the principles of separation. And the product is going to be corruption and what? And violence.
I cried from this platform. As I was teaching on sanctification, which is a core doctrine area in New Testament Christianity. I was led by the Lord to begin to build our foundations of faith again. And I started from the Old Testament to show us how that God was holy. And in order for us to walk with God, we will have to be holy. It is impossible to do business with a God that is holy if you are not like him. And I, I did a very detailed study of how the children of Israel, oh, they were going to partner with God, but it was impossible to partner with God because of the nature of God's holiness. And the entire book of Leviticus was written to see the sacrifices and the things that were required in order to make sinful man to walk with a holy God. That's the reason for which the entire book of Leviticus was written in order to reveal the basis of our sanctification, if we were going to interact and to have business with a God that is holy. Are you there? I also showed that anywhere God was, was considered holy. And that the, the latitude of the temple was measured according to degrees of holiness. We have the outer court. We have the holy place. Then we have what? The Holy of Holies. That if you are going to operate in intimacy with God, you'll be confronted by his bold nature of holiness. And that should make you adjust. If you, in, in case you want to do business with the God that is between the cherubims. In fact, those days, when the high priest is going into the Holy of Holies to transact with God, there is a rope that is used to tie his waist just in case he stands before God and God doesn't find him in the context of holiness. God will kill him. So when God kills him, nobody can go into the Holy of Holies. They will use that rope to draw him out of the presence of God and go and bury him. It means that the priest doesn't even know if the status of his right standing until he stands before Jehovah. So in the New Testament, to avoid slaughter, what was done in the New Testament is that the blood of Jesus becomes the token. It is, the blood is already dead. That means we are dead. We are already dead. Death is already smelling. And then it's under the death of Jesus that he has accepted that we can now come boldly. The God in the New Testament has not changed from the old one. But you see, the philosophy of the New Testament is that you come to God and begin to deal with God. The moment you begin to see the way he is, that he is holy, all right, you, through repentance, will begin to adjust to accommodate the fact that he doesn't change. This is how he is. So, and the blood of Jesus is available to take care of our errors when we see him and we discover that we are not like him. That blood is available to make us right with him so that we can keep joining with him. The, the idea is that as we keep joining with him, we'll keep changing, we'll keep changing, we'll keep changing until we sustain the very image of Christ where we become reflective of God in everything that we do 24 hours in a day. I cried from here that don't claim you are a minister of the gospel when you are dwelling perpetually in iniquity. Are you, are you following what I'm talking about? What, we are not the same. If you can dwell perpetually in iniquity, it means you have not met the God of redemption. Because if I, if I make a mistake, the Holy Ghost will, I will know he, is, he has left. And he will show me his displeasure. 100%. He cannot cope up. He cannot keep up with this kind of character. He's so sensitive. You will never know him until you come close. When you come close, you will not discover. Are you there? Then I will now stay before him in repentance for a long time until he says, okay, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Rise up. Rise up. Hallelujah.
Some of you, what you will do is you just plead the blood and say, I receive forgiveness because you don't know that God is a person. You use the textbook to deal with him and you don't know that he has feelings. You don't know that he's a person. You don't know that you need to stay before him until he registers the fact that, okay, my anger has been sated. We can continue working together. In my work with God, sometimes I'm preaching here and I tell you something that God has not sanctioned me to tell you. He will leave me from, on this pulpit. And that has happened like nine times. While you are hailing me that, oh, our pastor is a great teacher, I go home to cry because I know he left me. You will see how sensitive God is. So if a preacher, a so-called preacher, can dwell in immorality, eh? <laughs> it means he has not met this God that I preach. Are you following? Oh, you are not following me. You're not. He has not met this God that I preach. It is going to be a gross misrepresentation of God for me to claim that I'm in fellowship with that man under the guise of ecumenism. Because if I do that, what will happen is that what God wants to do with me will be compromised. Because the principle of separation is critical to maintaining the purity and the jealousy of that which God wanted to do. If you are still with me, say amen. amen. A preacher was caught in a situation of national misconduct. He never left the pulpit to seek alignment with God because for him, the pulpit is the business. He never left the pulpit. Never repented. Kept boasting about his departure in character. And Nigerian preachers rose up to defend him. That guy has not restituted his ways till today and he's still on the pulpit saying hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And people that have been bewitched still go to sit before him. And all of that is done in the name of the Lord. Stay with me. Let me show you a few scriptures. When there were attempts in the days of the apostles to infiltrate, I will show you what happened in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. The real church is about to emerge from the fallen one. Yes. If, if, you know, when you begin to keep your conviction, keep your commitment to God, and people, God that believers will say, ah, the way you are praying, is this? Did you sin? What is it? When you hear that, it is an attempt to diminish your brightness. The real church is about to rise up. Let me tell you, there's going to be a massive separation. The gap between the false light and the true light that has been dwelling side by side, the gap will start becoming wider. The reason is because of the presence of true apostolic people that can bear witness of the reality of the living God. The other day, somebody sent a, a, a text. I say, we will kill you. We will kill you. You know what? Don't send a text. If you see me, kill me. You, sending text is for weak people. If it is given unto you to do it, I challenge you in the name of Jesus. You don't know the fire that, that the God I serve carries. You will need more than a threat to, to stop us. I have seen death, death, death turn backward. Which is invoked death to take me. And he actually came. I saw death turn backward. My end will not come by blight. 
it will not come by a bomb. It will only be because the God of heaven says, it's time to come. When you see us, kill us. Don't send text messages. That's for weak people. We died long time ago. You can't threaten me with death. Now, please, please, let me advise you. As a young man, as a young woman, grow large in your spirit. Grow very large. Give yourself to fasting. Give yourself to prayer now.